Hey, welcome. I'm going to show a quick Kubernetes demo. Uh, this is going to be featuring the new fleet provisioner that's coming out with the Pure Service Orchestrator. So we've got a three node Kubernetes cluster, uh, nothing too exciting. It's installed uh, the Kubernetes integration that's built on top of the orchestrator. Um, you can just kind of show on that we've got the, the flex volume stuff installed, the provisioner installed, as well as a uh, initial config setup. Uh, so this whole thing keys off this config map. Uh, if we go look at it, it's, it's basically just a JSON file that points to a few flash arrays. Uh, we also have a flash blade in there. So the environment kind of looks like this. There's the controller, to compute, flash array, flash blade. Um, now, we're going to be looking mostly at flash arrays for this demo. The flash blade's in there just kind of showing that we can do it. Um, but really the, the kind of, you know, meat of this is going to be looking at a storage class that we're going to be scheduling between different flash arrays. So let's look at this storage class. Um, you'll notice that we, we pointed at the pure provisioner. We specify the back end should be block. So that this, this way, you know, you can key it to the block file or, or, not, or you know, don't specify and it'll do the right thing on its own. Um, now you may be wondering, okay, how do we use this thing? So sort of uh, step one, let's go look at a, a PVC definition that's going to use the storage class so that we, uh, the request is going to be, you know, basically create a claim, say to use the uh, pure storage class, and then our provisioner gets called to dynamically provision the volume uh, on demand. So take a look, we don't have anything created right now. Uh, if we go ahead and make this thing, what we'll see is that the PVC gets bound, there's a volume, we go look at the persistent volume, so we got this new dynamically created one. Um, now, our config has two flash arrays, so the question is where to go? How do we, you know, how do we decide which flash array to put it on? So let's go find it first of all, we'll go look at our arrays. Um, there we go. So we're just going to filter by the uh, namespace that we're playing in. Here it is. Okay, so we've got our PVC. Uh, this is kind of how they manifest on the arrays. Nothing, you know, too out of the ordinary. We've already had this support for almost a year now. So now, if we if we look at this, um, you know, we have two arrays. the The way that it got there is you have the controller, the provisioner. The provisioner is talking to these arrays. Uh, we're pulling information from them as well as making requests to them. If we want to zoom in further, we've got the controller. The provisioner is kind of this thin piece. It sits on top of the pure service orchestrator. The orchestrator is really doing the requesting. So if a PV request comes in from the controller, it goes to the provisioner. It's translated to the provisioner's API. From there, it's going to gather metrics. And it does, in this, this fleet provisioning layer, it gets basically performance, capacity, health, anything you can think of as far as stuff we can pull from the array, uh, as well as any, any filtering based on like user defined labels or labels that maybe the array creates on its own. And then the last step, once it decides, it's going to go and put it on a flash array, um, which is cool, right? Now, we have these two flash arrays. I don't know if you noticed, but they're, they're pretty full. So we've got one that I artificially put up to 90, the other 90, 93. Uh, so they're, they're you know, running out of space. What do we do? Well, just add another flash array, it's simple. Uh, it's as easy as just editing that JSON file. So I've got one pre-made here. If we go ahead and look at it. Okay, so you see now we've got three flash arrays. The one in the middle here, this, uh, 213 IP address. This is the new one. Let's go look at it real quick, make sure that that's the right place. I think it is. Log in. Okay, so here we go. We got another array. It's a, it's a little bit older model, but it's 17% full. We got a ton of capacity on here. So let's go ahead and use this. Let's add it in, get our cluster to start provisioning volumes on it. Uh, we can check right now, there's nothing on here. Uh, for for our current Kubernetes cluster. And like I said, all we have to do is update that, that file. Uh, so for the example, we're going to go ahead and delete the one that we made. We don't really need to keep it around. We'll create it again in a minute. 
Uh, first thing we want to do, so the, the JSON file, it's, it's in this config map. And so the, the old config map has the two. We want to update it from this new J JSON file. So we're going to use this kind of little bit hacky Kubernetes command, but basically it's just replacing the, the one that's in there. Uh, so now if we look at it again, you can see that it's got the updated JSON. So now whenever we do provisioning, it's going to weigh it across all three of those. Uh, you know, and effectively by doing that, it's just, we, we've just added an array. That's it. There's nothing to it. Um, as far as the cluster is concerned, there's no real overhead there. Uh, and immediately, as soon as the controller sees it, it's going to start making requests. Now, what we're going to do is create this. And let me actually show you something that's kind of interesting and uh, important thing to know is that the, these config maps are not immediately updated. They, they roll out through the cluster. Basically, if we wait long enough, Kubernetes will automatically update it. Right now, though, it, it hasn't gotten there yet. So the provisioner hasn't actually seen that change yet. So it's still scheduling to the, to the older arrays, which is fine, right? The service is still up, we're still running. Um, we're gonna shortcut this process a tiny bit. We're just gonna go kill the provisioner. And the, this is demonstrating one other important aspect of this, which is that it, it's pretty much stateless and the, the provisioner is very uh, durable. If the, if the node goes down, if the pod dies, if you do what we're about to do and just kill it, uh, it doesn't really matter. It, it'll just start up again. And in this case, we're, we're shortcutting the config map update because when it starts the new one, it'll get the latest config map. So here we go. So now when we create this, what's going to happen is it's going to go through, it's going to do that scheduling again, but it's going to see that there's a new array with a whole bunch of free space and it's going to start scheduling volumes onto it. So let's go look, see that the one we deleted's gone. Okay, here we go. So now, there it is. Our, our volumes are now on this array. And we're, we'll see until the arrays start to get closer to uh, you know a, a comparable spot that it's gonna favor this new one. So we've got our setup. Our cluster's all kind of one thing right now. We don't, we don't really distinguish much, but there's really this topology, right? These things are in racks. There's, say rack 27, rack 33, whatever. Um, and you know the, that's not only for the storage, it's for the nodes. And in Kubernetes, there's this sort of reasonably well thought through notion of being able to label your nodes. And so if we go look at these, we can see right now that we don't actually have like any uh, real descriptive topology on them. They've got a few labels that are like the you know operating system type, host name, that kind of thing. But, uh, but you know, if we want to add in some additional things, we could go label them and say, that, okay, everything's on rack 27, rack 33. We can label the arrays. We can label the flash blade. Uh, but, like, that's not, that's not really a great way for a developer to use this. Like, if I'm deploying an app, I don't care about the rack. Uh, you know, I think something that I would care about is maybe, like, a failure domain. And I could just say zone A, zone B, you know, whether that's a rack, a row, it doesn't matter. Uh, so Kubernetes has this... It's, it's a failure domain, and the scheduler knows about it. These are well-known keys. So we can label our compute, our controllers. We can put all of our kubelets in the right zones. Uh, so it's pretty easy. We just say kubelet CDL label, give it the node, give it the label name. Uh, there's a few other ones that are in this category. We're just going to demo with zone. Uh, but you can also set like region and some other things like that. Or, you know, back to that, that example with the rack, you could give any arbitrary labels, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we, we, we go through and label all of our nodes. Uh, the, the Kubernetes pod scheduler will key off of that. We can set affinities, but there's one last step here, which is we have to label our, our arrays and our flash blade. Uh, so if we look at our new pure.json file, I've put in some labels. So now each of our flash arrays and flash blade, we're gonna label we put the rack one in just in case, but we also specify the zones. So we're going to say that, you know, we've got one array in zone A, two in zone B, and then our, our flash blade is also in zone B. 
So we do the, the update song and dance. Suddenly we've got labels that, that match up to what our zones look like, both in Kubernetes and in the, the storage subsystem here. That's cool. So now let's, let's use it. Let me show you how to use it. So we, we make a new volume claim. Uh, we're gonna give this thing a name. We're gonna tell it to use the pure storage class so the request goes to the provisioner. But we're also gonna provide a selector. We're gonna say this thing needs to be on an array that falls into zone B for this failure domain. We're gonna do the same thing for the pod. So we're gonna specify, okay, go use this volume, use our claim, uh, and then we're gonna give it an affinity. And we're gonna say the node affinity means I want you to select nodes that are also in failure domain in zone B. So what you'll end up with is storage that's close to your compute. And we'll go create this example. Go look, we see that our, our persistent volume already been scheduled. It's very quick, just a few REST API calls. And there we go, pods running as well. So now, once we've done that, we know that everything's running together in the right failure domain. Uh, the cool part is that then, you know, say you have five flash arrays, five flash blades, 20 compute nodes, whatever. Uh, if, if things need to get moved around, you can ensure that things are gonna stay inside of those zones. So setting the pod affinity means that Kubernetes will restart it, but only on pods that still meet that demand. So we can go look, we can see that it, it scheduled it on that same array. We know that it's, that's one that was in the zone B. Uh, see that it's attached to a host. It, it auto-created that, did all the other kind of cool stuff that the plugins do. Um, and that's pretty much it. So hopefully this gives uh, an idea of the kind of flexibility and power you get with this. And uh, thank you for your time.